Hi, right, Kevin Blanche. Today I'm going to talk about pure finance, pure economics. QE2. The context of how crazy the whole philosophy of what the United States Fed has turned into. What Greenspan, Bernanke, the Fed, the Treasury Department, the whole smear, what it's turned into, it, it, it boggles my mind. And I cannot believe that America cannot even wake up to it. I, I mean, even the really, really intelligent, smart financial analysts you see on CNBC or whatever, I mean, it blows my mind that they can't break down into the context of what this is really all about. It's philosophical. Look, in the 90s, what is the Fed's role? To control inflation, correct? Okay, so as we have inflation, what's the tool they use? Raise interest rates. Okay, we know what happened in the 80s. In the late 70s, in the early 80s, we started to get runaway inflation. So Volcker made the decision, we're going to raise interest rates to the Fed. We're, we're stopping it. They did. It hurt. Now, it pushed interest rates up sky high. But think about if you're fixed income, or if people got money in a bank account, you love those interest rates. I remember having a, I'd buy a CD every one when i get laid off. I can remember getting 18% interest. Think about it. You see advertised two-year CD notes at a percent and a half. People would roll over. So, they did force it up. It's, it's, it put a halt to building, a lot of things, but it worked. Yeah, we want to look at things in this context of a few days. It worked. Look, the prosperity that we had in the 90s is a direct reflection of what happened with the Fed in the freaking 80s. Now, when Greenspan took over in 87, like I said, the Volcker interest rate had raised up. It had killed inflation. We started to get massive deflation in the 90s in the context of commodity pricing. Now, let's think about commodity pricing in the 90s. Remember, we had the same scenario going in the 70s with gold. Remember the bubble up in gold? And remember when it came crashing down? Do you remember how fast it fell? And there was a lot of manipulation. The Hunt Brothers in the silver market. Well, what? But commodity prices were inflating intensely. Oil was going crazy. They smashed it. Do you realize it was those policies? Yeah, we took, it's called classical medicine. We took our classical medicine and it worked. Yeah, it hurt for a while. We created incredible prosperity. So, oil, $1.34 in the late 90s. And gasoline, a gallon of gasoline was $1.34. Think about this. I remember looking at oil at $10 a barrel in the 90s sometimes. It fluctuated between $10 and $20. Gold would fluctuate between $200 and $300, usually in the lower 200s. I mean, wheat prices, beef prices, I mean, they were really low. The consumer was getting so processed, and the market was rising at the exact same time. That is an incredible sign. And the dollar was becoming incredible weak. You want to talk about a triple synergy. Markets rising in the United States. Deflation in commodities. And, well, I should back up a little bit. And there was one thing that was not happening. Real wages weren't rising. They haven't rise for 30 years. But we did have deflation in commodity pricing. We had the stock market rising. And we had the dollar getting incredible strength. That is the key. That is the key. Now look, our market, yeah, we've bounced up 100% two years. we bounced up 100%. Think about that. 100%. Well, think about it. Now let's do the math. Let's go back to third grade math. Market loses 50%. Any, this is a math question for, you know, second graders. You lose 50%, then you gain 100%. You're still the same place, correct? I mean, so if you don't think time in the market is important and there's a lot of luck involved, well, uh, it, it means everything. I mean, I like to look at a bigger, broader context. I like to look at 10, 20, 30, 40 year windows. You know, I don't like to sit and look at two, three years. I like to, like I always say, I like to step back like Malay and look at the broader prospect. Okay, let's talk about the market. Now, let's think if you track the dollar versus the euro over the last six months, versus the Dow. Yeah, the Dow's made this game. They're exact. They're exact. Look, the dollar went from 70 cents to a buck 60 against the euro. All the way back down. We were, we were reeling in last year. We were having a hell of a synergy going on. Things were starting to get old. Really, uh, your wealth was really starting to get some strength. You know, not some strength. It was getting a little bit better. 
I should say. Buck sixty, we're gonna clear down to buck twenty. We're starting we're inflating our way back out. We're going right down to the same old path. It's the same old fed, kicking the can down the road. Let's talk about QE2. So here we come along, the lower interest rate, the high interest rates of the eighties created the prosperity of the nineties. Well, when we started to bubble up again and inflate in early two thousands, March 10, 2000, when this game capitulated, Greenspan, in theory, the fake Rand Rander, I call him, the free market guy. How's a free market guy? Yeah, exuberant, exuberant. He was no free guy. He was a phony. He was a fake. He's the, he will go down in history as the worst Fed treasurer in history, bar none. He is one of the worst. I mean, he had everybody tricked with his language. He is probably the worst. He, he's the worst economist in this country's history, bar none. That's my opinion, and I really believe it. It's true. Now, Bernanke, we'll see. We'll see, but he's walking down the same path. Okay. And you know the Republicans hard dug in neocon right Republicans. You do know that. Supply side economics. Anne Rand. Free Mark, she was a science fiction writer. Please. I mean, how anybody can relate this to economic practice is a total moron. Okay. So here he comes. We start to inflate again, Larry. Did he raise rates? No, he did the opposite. He slashed it. Now, granted, popular opinion in America, where attention spans, I like to say, attention spans like everyone's dick, about that long. I agree that there's popular. But the Fed doesn't operate in the same context as Congress operates in. Look, the Fed's an independent body. They don't have to report to the freaking voter. Congress does. Congress is Washington. So he was doing it. This is nothing more than a rotation in wealth. This has done nothing but benefit the, the 1% of the world, of the world, not... I mean, if you don't think the bohemian freaking gig in the Northwest is real, it's real. I mean, the, the wealth and the powers on the right, they stick together like a den of wolves all over the world. So, here we go. He starts lowering rates when they should be rising. With the context, yeah, he, he can see the writing on the wall, Marks are crash. So let's do the math through the 2000s. Through the 2000s, everybody says, oh, the Dow kind of stayed where it was, you know, for up to 2008 when it cracked. No, 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 no. The Dow was hammered hard. All wealth was hammered. Everything was hammered. Everybody says, oh, I bought gold. Oh, really? Okay. Okay, you bought gold. Yeah, well, I, if you'd have bought gold in 2004, yeah, you made a good investment. But when you bought gold in 2007, 2008, 2000, horrible investment, horrible. You've had 100% return in the S&P 500. Gold hasn't gained 100% since then. It was at 900. It's gone to 1300. You lost money. So in that contest, now if you bought gold in the earlier part of the decade, more power to you. But I know very, very few people that did that. And if you bought gold in the 70s, still holding it. Well, right on, man. You know, I, I wish I would live to be forever too. But so. He started raising rates when he should have been, I mean, lowering rates when he should have been raising. So we had the slow motion crash. The Dow sit there. In reality, it was crashing. Commodity prices were off the hook in the 90s. We had the most massive inflation this country has ever had in the 90s. The Fed would come out and tell you 3.5%, 3 3.2%, 3 you know, please. We had massive Gold went from 225 to 1400. We've had uh, oil went from 10, 15 dollars a barrel to 160 dollars a barrel. We had medium price of a house triple, quadruple in some places, three, four hundred percent. We had wheat prices triple. Today, right now, today, we're setting records in the commodity market. Do you do know that corn, wheat? These they're breaking records right now. So. Yeah, it, it's helping the wheat farmer who exports into China the massive corporate wheat. That's all it's helping. It's it, so we're, we're going down the same road, we're kicking, so they run out of bullets, they keep slashing the interest rates, slash. so the rate's so low when they actually need it, they need it to stimulate, the market crashed in 2000, we get in depressionary times, and we actually really need it, they don't have it, because they blew their gig when they weren't supposed to be using it, because they wanted to make all their rich friends even richer. Which, that's all this is, economic perspective, you know, you can go to, uh, you know, Freeburg, all these guys, or Freeman, and uh, all that. they're dug in hardcore and ran neocons. It is based in psychological idealism. Their economic theory is based in, which is sickening. It's a horrible way to be. Good economists are not ideologues. Greenspan is one of the hardcore ideologues in history. So is Bernanke. So is the Harvard boys. They're hard, hard 
core ideologues, extreme, radical, extreme ideologues. So here we come along. We have, what, QE2? Please, do you understand what that is? You know, I wrote about it in my book, and then I was ranting on it in my book in one of my chapters, and then three days later, after I get that whole chapter written, I, I, I look, and here they go. I'm like, this was not only unheard of in for 200 years in this country, 10, 20, 30 years ago, not unheard of, it was illegal. The Fed couldn't go in and start freaking buying up things in our markets. It's like blowing it from yourself, going in and buying stuff. I've been ranting a long time about this, since 2000. This has been going on since 2000. This has, where the Fed goes behind by closed doors and starts playing in our markets. It's unheard of. And they call themselves free markets. QE2, they're buying how much? $60 billion treasuries from themselves? I mean, oh my God. America and the economists won't even think about this? It is so radical, radical, crazy. You know, I, I, Rogers, I like to listen to him, a great commodity trader who used to be on CNBC with the bow tie. For 10 years, he, ran, he left. He went to Singapore. He's like, what does it matter with the Fed? What does it matter with them? We have ideologues in the Fed. The economic theorists of this country are pure, hardcore, radical ideologues. And America can't see it because they're being tricked because they're inflating their way out of these things. Look, as the Dow rises a little bit, so what if your currency is getting weaker? You step back 10 years. You go to my website, Blanche Schwartz. I've, I've weighed every single country. What it's done in the last decade. You know what kind of wealth? The entire total wealth in this country, in the United States, has been 60 to 80 percent has been lost in the last decade. And the government numbers, you can't believe any. The unemployment number, oh, what a scam that is. This is exactly the identical thing that went on in the 30s, early 30s. Absolutely identical under Hoover. Exactly identical thing. There's no difference. You play a speech between Bush and Bush fed and the Hoover, you, you can't even, t it's word for word, it's identical. The only difference in the unemployment right now, we didn't have government employees then. We have mass, mass, we have millions and millions and millions of government employees. I hear people right where I live. I live in Weber County in Utah. We are the number, the number one employer bar none is the federal government. And I hear these people radical, ah, the federal government, I said, boy, you sure like chasing the, I mean, the IRS service centers here, Hillfield's here, they sure like cashing those freaking checks. Do you know what the unemployment rate with? We did not have gun employments right now. It'd be worse than freaking... I mean, right here in the 1930s, the unemployment rate was 37%. You know, Mariner Eccles, WPACC, you think it's a coincidence? We got all this magnificent architecture here. I write about it a lot in my book. But stay with me. QE2 is, is a big, big scam. And they call themselves free marketplace. And Randers. That's free marketplace stimulating, falsely stimulating via the taxpayer, the interest rate lower and lower, and as they do that and stimulate it lower and lower and lower, who foots the bill? The American taxpayer, the masses. And if you think the wealth in this country pays any taxes, you're crazy. And I love it how we stop raising the, the tax rate on the wealth. And if you think that was the wealth who stopped that, oh no, the middle class whites stopped it. The ignorant middle class, ignorant stopped it. And, I mean, <laughs> they, 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 again, against their own prosperity. Wow. If you're wondering who this is, all you artists in Brooklyn, Manhattan, you know who he was. Kevin Blanche, February 2011.